was pretty optimistic at this point. I thought, man, we're going to be on the summit like two people. And I can pretty much guarantee this, there's over six billion people on this planet, and yet nowhere is there a group of people sitting around a board table right now trying to figure out how you can have your best life. If you're really wanting to change it, measure it. The successful people, they know what they want. And that's what we all have to figure out. What do you want in life? And he gets going again, and he makes his comments like, oh, this is harder than I thought. And he keeps going, and he's like, oh, I don't know if I can make this. And I, the whole time, I'm doing the good teammate thing. You know, come on, Jim, you can do it. Yeah, we can do it, Jim. Let's go, Jim. We're almost at the top. Hours and hours from now. And so we keep going up the mountain like this, and I'm keeping encouraging Jim, and Osvaldo's encouraging Jim. But after a while, I start to get tired. I start to get so tired that I start to think, I don't think, I, I mean, we're talking hours, like three hours, four hours, we're still climbing, I feel like we're on this escalator, we're not even moving. And then I start to think, I don't think I can make this. But I don't want to quit, because whoever quits, I mean, it's over for everybody. If one goes down, we all go down, because we have one rope left. And then I start thinking, well, I don't need to quit. I just need Jim to quit. <laughs> in fact, I think I can outlast him. I know I can outlast him because I'm in better shape. And I start thinking like this. That's right, Jim will quit and then I'll get to go down. It's like an honorable discharge from the mountain. Because I can tell all my friends I'd have made it to the top if it wasn't for Jim. He had to turn around. And so now we're going. And it just affects you in this weird way. And we're starting to get... And then I do, I do even the worst thing. Jim's like, oh, I don't know if I can make it. But I don't want to let you guys down. I say, Jim, I open the door for him. Jim, I'm not summit obsessed. If you need to go down, that's okay with me. It's like, no, no, I think I need to keep going. And I'm like, no, Jim, really. I mean, I won't be hurt if you have to go down. But Jim keeps going. He's like, no, I don't want to let you down. So he keeps going. And I'm like, oh, man. But I know I'm going to last him. I know he'll turn around. So we just keep going. I'm thinking, okay. It's not much longer. So finally, we, we get to this point. We're like 20,000 feet, and Osvaldo stops us because Jim doesn't seem like he can go anymore. And I actually pulled out my video camera and filmed this. And Osvaldo and Jim are having this discussion at 20,000 feet. Osvaldo gets on the radio. He goes, Base Camp, uh, the clients are tired. We're uh, going to decide whether we're going to go on or not. And so they're having this discussion, and Jim pulls out the ultimate trump card on a mountain guy. He appeals to safety. He says, I don't think it'll be safe. And I lean in. Yeah, we don't want to be unsafe. <laughs> and so they have this talk, and then Osvaldo goes, Santiago. That's what they call me in South America. He goes, Santiago. I'm like, yeah. He goes, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel great. Yeah, we can go up, we can go down, whatever. I realized there's a fine line between optimism and lying, and I certainly crossed it. So Osvaldo, I think, because of my response, goes to Jim. He goes, Jim, let's see that ridge. Let's stop there. Jim and I look up. Oh, okay. Jim goes, okay, I can do that. And I said, yeah, Jim, we'll make that our summit. That'll at least be above 20,000. So That'll be above 6,000 meters. Let's do that. And we're, so we're excited. Yeah, we're going to stop at the ridge. And so up we go. But as I'm going, I'm getting tired again. I'm also wondering, what are we doing? Like, each step I take up is one step i got to take back down. We're not going to the top anyway. So why are we even going to that ridge? And it's amazing, your motivations. I mean, the goal of trying to climb the highest peak in Bolivia is now long gone. I don't care. And I even know there's also tons of people watching our dispatches because every day we call with a sat phone and they update it on the internet. And so our family can read what's going on. I don't even care anymore. I don't care what my friends think. I want to go down. So we keep going up and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting really tired. We finally, 45 minutes later, we get to the top of this ridge. And we, Jim and I are in a great mood and we're finally eating some lunch and we're hanging out there. And after about five minutes there, Osvaldo gets on the radio and he goes, Campo base, campo base, base camp. We are going to the summit. Osvaldo goes, and then Jim goes, what? No, you said we're stopping here. And this argument breaks out between the two of them. Oh, it's, just, it's only another hour, Jim. No, you said to go here. He goes, no, it's just a little bit. I can't go any further. Then Jim finally says, just stake me into the mountain and then you two go. And Osvaldo says, no, he says, 
us on the mountain, we're family. And we all stick together. We go up together or we go down together. Of course, Jim's feeling bad. Like he's going to you know, ruin the climb. And I'm like, oh, Jim, just quit. You know, quit. <laughs> so Jim decides, okay, I'll go a little further. And so we hadn't got more than, honestly, 10 steps, 10 steps, because it was another steep section. I actually hadn't even got to it yet. I'm still, the rope's still all slack at my feet. And Jim gets up and he takes it, and he goes, no, that's it, I call it. I'm sorry I've had enough, but that's it. And I'm like, yes, finally, we can go down. And so all I see, I say to Osvaldo, Osvaldo, what's our altitude? I want to know what our final altitude was. But he doesn't listen to me. Osvaldo, he's like five foot nothing, like 240 pounds. And I can see him, he's marching down the mountain. And he gets right into Jim's face. And he's like, Jim, you are very strong. And he's like, I'm this conversation. And Jim's like, no, I can't go on. He says, so let's just go to that ridge. And Jim says, no, because if I get to that ridge, you're going to trick me. And then we're going to have to go to another ridge. <laughs> And I think this whole thing's funny. I'm now hypoxic. I just start laughing. I think the whole thing is like, what is going on? And so finally, Jim says to Osvaldo, he goes, did you promise me that if you get me to the top, you will get me down? And it was like this moment between climber and guide. And Osvaldo simply says, yes, I'll get you down. So Jim says, okay. And I said, oh. <laughs> They interviewed 20,000 people, four continents, and they asked them, what are you looking for in a leader? So we're talking, this is a broad, broad sample. Canada was included in this. And um, number one thing people want in a leader. You know what it was? The number one answer. 90% people said this, including Canada. You know what it was? Take a guess. Honesty. Honesty. Yeah. The magic bullet, honesty. Does that surprise you? Our politicians could uh, get their mind around this one, eh? What do we want most? We want honesty. Just tell me the truth. I don't expect you to be perfect. Just tell me the truth. Does it surprise you, though, that honesty would be at the top? And the thing is, well, what is honesty? I mean, and it seems we'd rather see honesty then be told about it the reason why honesty is number one and why it's so important for a leader is because honesty builds trust and at the end of the day trust is influence remember this we're trying to influence people and he goes she wants you to become the godfather of the child I'm a bit taken back by all this but you know, when you do little things to make someone's day, it's amazing how, at some point, it comes back to make yours. What do you think my most cherished memory of Bolivia is? Being on top of this mountain, doing this, doing that. It's this. So now I gotta go back down there for this whole ceremony. This means more to me than reaching the sun. And I'm telling you, there's situations all around you as you go to work each day that give you the opportunity to make someone else's day. One day, we're not going to have all that stuff. And you're going to be left with one thing. And it's the impact that you had on this world. That's why we want to live our best life.